All right, so we are here today to do an interview panel um, with Stephanie and Dana for industrial engineering. Um, my name's Nicole. I've been doing a couple of these and I work at Civco Medical Solutions. So I'll just kick it over to Stephanie and Dana and they can introduce themselves. And then I'll go ahead and ask them some questions that pertain specifically to industrial engineering so that anyone out there that's listening from K through 12 can learn more about this career and see if it's something that interests them. So Stephanie, if you want to start and just introduce yourself and explain your current role. Sure. Uh, my name is Stephanie. I currently work at Rockwell Collins or Raytheon Technologies in the Coralville office. I've only been there since Thanksgiving, so I haven't been there too long, um, but I am technically a senior quality engineer for them. Awesome. Thank you. And then Dana? Hi, I'm Dana Espinoza. Um, my current role is quality supervisor at uh, the Quaker plant in Cedar Rapids. Um, so I've been here for about two years within this role. Okay, sorry about that. My computer was sketching out and I couldn't get the mute button. Uh, thanks for that. So the next question that I have is, can you explain what industrial engineering is and give us a background of what this type of engineering involves? And I'll have Dana, you start first. Yeah, so industrial engineering to me is really about improving, improving processes um, and optimizing those. So really processes could be you know, just about anything that you can think of and it can also involve people. So it's not just manufacturing systems, it's a lot of um, people work as well. Um, so I'm sorry, what was the other part of the question? Yeah, the other part was just explaining what industrial engineering was. So just give a background and explain what it is. So I think you answered the question. Yeah, there's a lot of different examples. <laughs> <laughs> I won't try to explain everything. Uh, well, if you wanted to give a few examples, I think just trying to figure out what, how this engineering differs from other engineering backgrounds too is going to be helpful. Actually, that's my next question. So um, we can maybe do a two for one in this question too, of just what types of uh, jobs you could have as an industrial engineer and why it's different from other types of engineering. Dana, if you want to continue with that. Yeah. So to me, industrial engineering is really a broader engineering um, than some of the other disciplines. So chemical is very focused on the chemistry aspect. Um, if you do, do electrical, you're gonna be heavily involved with actual electrical components, um, things like that. Industrial engineering to me is a much broader category. Um, so we take classes in a lot of different engineering um, aspects as well as business. Um, so to me, it's a good tie of business and engineering, um, and you're trying to improve processes and eliminate waste wherever they're, wherever they are. Um, so if, if that's within manufacturing components, um, then you would be improving those processes. If it's coaching people, you could be doing that. Um, you could be doing training work as well. Um, Let's see, I, and as far as like jobs go, um, all of my experience has been in food manufacturing. Um, however, I have interviewed with people like Amazon um, for more warehouse distribution logistics types of jobs. I've interviewed with hospitals um, for kind of continuous improvement type roles. Um, pretty much all manufacturing areas. Um, you can even go into airlines and hospitality. Um, also hire some industrial engineers as well. Cool, so it sounds like a lot of opportunities. Stephanie, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I would um, also say that I feel like industrial engineering is kind of a jack of all trades situation. We touch a little bit of everything in our schooling, like uh, Dana said, and um, basically every company needs an industrial engineer in some way, shape, or form. Whereas some companies are like specific, yes, I need a chemical engineer because I'm making food or what have you. We also need an industrial engineer because that food has to get made. 
Um, I also think it's uh, a very people oriented field. Whereas sometimes when you get into like mechanical or biomedical, you get into the nitty gritty working with like the parts. Whereas for me, I actually ended up getting my minor in psychology because as an industrial engineer, you start, you take like a basic psych class because you have to work with the people who operate the machines. Um, but then for me, my focus area was human factors and ergonomics, which basically means that you want to make the job easy for the user. So you need to understand layouts and how to take stress off the body. So I just continued with my psych classes, ended up getting a minor in that, which I think has been super helpful. Um, as far as job opportunities, she kind of touched on it. You can do quality, you can be a straight IE, you can, um, which is efficiency pretty much. You're trying to save money, make things like better, faster, stronger, um, cheaper. Uh, you can be a quality engineer, you can be, you can go into um, management, um, you can do a lot, a lot of different things. That's why I say like jack of all trades. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good description. I remember when I was back in college trying to decide what major I would want to go into. And it seemed like all of the other types of engineering were very specific. So if it's biomedical, it's more focused on the medical field. If it's chemical, it's more focused on chemistry. And so industrial was definitely something that you could use across uh, different mm -hmm. disciplines. There's a lot of different areas you can go into. I've worked with office furniture. I've worked with hydraulic valves. And now I'm working with the aer aerospace. So mm -hmm. all different things with one background. Yeah, definitely. Okay, can you guys walk us through a day at the office and also just some exciting things that you've got to do either at the current job that you're at or previous jobs that you've had? And Stephanie, I'll let you go first. Sure, I'll use um, past job experiences because I haven't been here very long. So I'm still learning a lot of new things. Um, sorry, I have a do two dogs actually. Um, so at one of my very first jobs, we did kind of like a rotation situation for a year where we tried out a bunch of different positions within the company, and then you kind of went into your full-time role. So um, a day in the life there, I worked. In, I did work in a factory. I was a um, textbook IE. I worked with the efficiency of the machines and um, yield for materials and things like that. So I would get in. I would... Um, pretty much like make a round on the floor to kind of see what was going on because shift started at four, but I got in at seven. Um, I would run some reports just to kind of see where we're at, what we need to improve on. Um, so there was day-to-day -day aspects of a job uh, that you have to perform every day, but there was also projects. So working on getting like material yield up to 95% or whatever the goal was. So just um, a lot of project work, a lot of, um, computer work but there's also you had meetings I worked closely with a bunch of design engineers because we would be la launching new products so I would take their designs and review them to make sure that we could produce them the way that they want um, so that was kind of some of the more exciting things that I got to do see concepts from um, like development all the way through launch so that was one of my favorite projects to do Cool. That sounds awesome. Dana, do you want to add on to that? Uh, sure. I, so it's hard for me to describe a typical uh, day in the, the life because my day changes so much just depending on um, what's going on. Since I am in a manufacturing plant, it's really reacting to what's happening at the time or trying to come up with proactive solutions to problems that we we have, um, since I'm in quality, um, some of my days are filled with holds, just, just depending on what has occurred, um, different quality issues that we've had, also expanding our quality programs throughout the plant. So bringing in that continuous improvement and we have projects going to try to make some of our quality programs um, better. So. Some of the days are filled with meetings. Um, some of the days are spent with time on the floor talking to the operators and getting a sense of um, what they think we can improve. Um, also showing them like the quality metrics that we have so that they understand where we're at, um, what kind of complaints we're getting, things like that. So there really is no typical day. It changes every day, which is actually one of the things I love 
about my job is that every day I come in and it's kind of something different. Um, some of the exciting things I've worked on. Um, so in my two years here at Quaker, um, we got to launch Chocolate Life. So that was a new product for it. And I was included on that um, since the beginning and doing testing here at the plant. So doing multiple rounds of testing and then being able to see it actually launched out to market um, was exciting. We've actually already done another project as well, a new product. Um, I can't say what it is though, because it's not out yet, um, but we've done the testing for it once here already. Um, we've also done a lot of formulation changes. So anytime we change a formula or a recipe um, to a product, I'm involved with that as well so that we can make the formula change here at the plant. Um, from past experiences, um, some of my more exciting work was with, um, I was a project engineer for a while at another food manufacturer, and um, I got to put in, you know, tens of thousand dollars worth of, of new equipment. So that was always exciting to me to bring some new equipment into the plant and, and get it going. Spending money for fun things. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I have a totally unrelated question now that you're in the food manufacturing business. So do you guys, from a quality perspective, do you guys have taste testing involved with your products? And is that more on like a qualitative scale? And, and who does that? Do you bring in like just people from around the community or does your group do that? It's kind of a question I've always wondered. So I can't really answer much from a corporate perspective. <laughs> um, we do taste the food. Um, that we make here at the plant. Uh, so we actually, since COVID started, we haven't been able to do that just because um, you can't have groups of people together anymore. Um, but we used to do that twice a shift um, is how often we would do, we call it sensory here at the plant. Um, in terms of what they do for like new products, I, I can't say a ton about what corporate does, but they do have some type of like focus groups that, we'll make the product here at the plant. Um, they'll collect samples and we, we send cartons of it to them. And um, I'm not sure how they decide who, who gets to be part of that, but I, I know that it occurs. I just don't know a lot of details about it. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure if engineers got to be a part of that, if that was something that I don't, could be exciting that you get to try the foods every once in a while. But. Um, okay, my next question is more geared towards previous experience. So how have your past high school and maybe even college experience helped you, have, how have they helped you in your job now? So I'm not only thinking of academics, but also anything that you guys did outside of schooling that has helped you in your engineering degrees. And I'll have, uh, Dana, you can start. Okay. Um, gosh, that's thinking back a lot of years. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> um, I mean, I would say high school wise, probably, I mean, the things that helped the most high school wise um, were academic related, I feel like. Um, outside of that, it was probably more of like the leadership positions that I had within um, different organizations at school or even if you are out in your community and you're volunteering and you're leading projects that way, that was probably the experiences that helped me the most um, going into college and then uh, future careers. Um, and within college, it, it, I mean, it's mostly your classes and internships that help as well, um, but you can also have leadership positions on on campus with different organizations, there's plenty of them. Um, and the other thing I would say is also branch out. Um, so, so take risks or join organizations or, or do different things that might kind of scare you a little bit um, or might seem risky to you, but those are actually probably some of the situations that I've grown the most in, um, things that were outside of my comfort zone. Um, and those really helped me prepare for my current job because you're going to, you're going to fail 
at some point. Um, it's inevitable, um, but if you can learn early on how to how to fail but move forward at the same time, um, that's going to set you up for success. Yeah, Stephanie, do you want to follow up on that? Yeah, I would agree. Um, definitely being like well-rounded, not just sticking like not just sticking to school, but getting involved in whether it's sports or band or 4-H or whatever your church group, whatever it is. I'm um, getting involved because a lot of people have a stigma with engineering that it's for people who they don't have social skills, they want to just like work on a computer, and that is not the case. There is not a single engineer out there um, for the most part who doesn't work on a team. Um, so you have to learn to work with people. You have to learn how to interact and how to communicate. Um, and that can come from literally anything. So being social um, to whatever degree you're comfortable with is super helpful. Um, it helps you learn how to interact with a bunch of different personalities as well. Um, Cause that will come into play both in college, having to work um, on projects with people you don't know or who aren't your friends that are in your classes. Um, and then translating over into your actual job because you don't get to pick your team when you're applying for jobs. You're just applying for the job that you're going to be good at and that you will enjoy. And then you have whatever team is there. And so you need to be able to adapt and kind of learn how to interact and how to be successful that way. Um, I also think she made a good point about uh, learning to fail because things are not going to go correctly um, on the first try, second try. It, it's definitely a learning curve. It's definitely a um, challenge every day to be successful. Um, but I mean, that's kind of the fun part of it, right? So um, I definitely think being well-rounded, being involved, working on your social skills um, will definitely help both in college and um, in the workplace. Yeah, you guys are teeing up my next questions left and right here, this is great. <laughs> my next question is share a time that you failed and what you did afterwards to overcome this failure. So um, it could be something small or big, but as you guys have both said, it's not uncommon to fail. You definitely experience it. We're all human and not perfect. So um, this could be again, at your current job previous, or even maybe in college too. So Stephanie, if you want to start and share a time that you failed, hopefully you guys can remember some, hopefully there's not oh, a sure. lot, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Um, I don't know about like a specific failure, just because a lot of your failures like, aren't often going to be catastrophic or like on a huge scale where you're going to remember um, just like this terrible, terrible day. It's going to be a lot of little things like you missed a zero in something and now you have to redo a report or something like that. Um, I think, I mean, that's often where mine come from. Uh, I, I can remember at one of my very first jobs, like I often had to email my boss and be like, oh wait, I have to redo this. And I think that the major lesson in all of that is to own up to it. Um, and to be completely transparent right off the bat, like if I did something like that, I wanted to make sure I went to my boss and I explained what happened and how I'm going to fix it. And I mean, they, they'll understand, they make mistakes too. Um, I think it's just important not to kind of like sweep it under the rug and kind of do fix it behind the scenes and kind of make it look, um, maybe it's late, but you're like, oh yeah, it's fine. I think to be upfront and honest about it and to explain to them how you're going to fix it is something that my bosses in the past have said that they appreciate um, when you're, when you have a plan of how you're going to fix it. And then next time, you know how to avoid it. So I think that's um, pretty important. Yeah, Dana, do you have an experience to share too? Yeah. Um... Like Stephanie said, there's probably many. Um, yeah, and I would kind of echo a lot of Stephanie's um, points. So I, I do have one like particular example of when I was a project engineer. Um, I thought I was doing my due diligence upfront in ordering um, this piece of equipment, um, and I and I asked people about it, and I and I thought like I. I had the information 
down. Like I, I knew what was going on. And I ordered, the, ordered this equipment, come to find out it's actually too small for the application that we needed to use it for. I mean, that was like a $40,000 mistake. Like that's not, I mean, granted that's not huge in terms, in terms of um, equipment for manufacturing because you can easily spend way more than that. But I was devastated. And yeah. like Stephanie said, I just immediately owned up to it like, and, and told the team, guys, it's, it's my fault. That was my mistake. Here's what we're going to do to fix it. Um, so it's a lot of what Stephanie said, own up to it. Don't try to sweep it under the rug. Um, nobody's going to appreciate that. So take responsibility for your mistakes, but then um, also come up with that solution and learn from it. So, I mean, I, I had a huge learning from that in terms of making sure that I was more prepared the second time around. And I mean, I had things planned out in my head of, you know, I could have been doing this, this or that to actually double check my numbers um, to make sure I didn't order the wrong piece of equipment. Um, but if you do, own up to your mistakes, um, like Stephanie said, and then come up with a solution for it too. Everybody is going to appreciate that. And everybody knows that that you're trying and it's not like you purposely made that mistake. I had a, my manager at the time actually told me after that, he was like, you know what? If you didn't make that mistake, it, sh it would show me that you weren't trying. Not that like I needed to make the mistake to show him, but he was like, you know, I mean, it just shows me that you're you're trying within your job and you're trying to do the best that you can do. And sometimes mistakes are just going to happen. Yeah, I definitely agree with both of you. I think in my past experience, the very first question that comes up when you share with your manager that you failed is, well, how are you going to fix it? That's the very first thing that comes out of their mouth. They don't <laughs> even really care what, what happened as long as you're going to fix what happened. So that's definitely the most important thing to focus on. Um, this kind of goes along the lines of failure, not so much, but is it normal, going back to high school, is it normal to struggle in STEM subjects in high school and also college? And how do you kind of manage the struggle? So basically, if you fail a class or don't do well on a test, is that something that should indicate that you shouldn't do engineering? Or is it pretty common that those things will happen? And how do you kind of move forward from that? So um, Dana, I can have you go first. Yeah, so I mean, I would I would say I don't I don't know about everybody else, but my experience wise, that's so. To answer one of your questions, no, um, just because you struggle um, in some sort of discipline within STEM does not mean that you should just give up on it. Like, oh, engineering's not for me. Too bad. Um, I did struggle with with some things. I was I was great at calculus, great at um, differential equations, but physics was not my strong suit. Um, so that was like my downfall and I just hated physics. Um, but the things that I did to, to try to get over it, um, so within college we had to take physics classes. Um, I actually ended up hiring a tutor to help me. Um, I had study groups. To try to try to learn the material better. I tried different types of learning mechanisms um, to see if that would help. But I would say do not let, don't let struggles within some sort of STEM subject to um, derail you or think that, you know, I can't do this. Um, this isn't the right path for me. If this is something that you're passionate about, keep going. Um, because a lot of times what you learn in school, you might not even necessarily apply to, to your future job either. Yeah, Stephanie, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I would say in high school, as far as math science goes, it's more deciding if you like it. If it's something that you're good at, you're, you might not necessarily like it. If you're not very good at it, you probably don't necessarily enjoy it to begin with. Um, but I think high school is just kind of like testing the waters and then you get to college and you take all of your STEM classes. And I would say that, I mean, engineering is not supposed to be easy. Otherwise everybody would do it. Right. Um, so it's supposed to be difficult and, um, 
you're you're supposed to struggle a little bit. I don't think that if you're like can't keep your head above water, um, that you should put yourself through that necessarily. But I mean, it's struggling is I think a sign that you care about it and you want to get better. Um, I remember I was very close to switching out of engineering my sophomore year, that, that dreaded sophomore year where you're taking thermo and you're taking circuits and you're taking statics and all these classes. And I was not good at circuits at all. I remember taking a final and crying afterwards because I was so upset. I called my dad and I said, I'm going to switch. And he's just like, well, why? He's like, are you planning on being an electrical engineer? Do you have to take more electronic classes? And I was like, well, well no. And he's like, well, then yeah, you need the basic knowledge, but it, you're not going to hate your job every day because you're not doing that. So um, I think that, like I said, STEM's not supposed to be easy, but you, sh- you should enjoy it, even if it's not super easy for you. Don't get discouraged. Everyone struggles. Um, all of your friends are in the same boat. Maybe you're really good at statics and your friend is really good at circuits. And so you help each other. Um, that was kind of the boat that I was in. Statics way- made way more sense to my brain. Um, and I remember I took a chemistry class my freshman year when I started out as biomedical, I took chemistry one and I was just like, you know what? I don't like chemistry. It's not my favorite. And if I do biomed, I'm going to have to take more chem bio classes. And that's kind of when I saw industrial engineering and I was like, these sound way more up my alley. It's how my brain works. So I think you should take struggles as indication that you're trying um, but also you should take them as indication of what you're good at and what you enjoy. And maybe other doors will open up within engineering. It might not be what you dreamed of, but you'll surprise yourself. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I even experienced that after college when I started my first job, I worked at um, a programming, I did software engineering and I didn't graduate in software engineering, but it was a mix of, it was an electronic medical record for hospitals. So it was a mix of biomedical and computer and I just did not enjoy computer engineering. I kept trying, kept trying. It was just not something that I was naturally good at. And so I knew this is not for me and I need to do something else and switched out of that. So even if you, like you said, Stephanie, even if you do struggle, that just could be a strong indicator that you're still meant for engineering, but maybe a different path within engineering that you excel at. And I think that's very common that a lot of people go into school thinking that I want to be one thing. And then um, they have other doors opened up to them and see that something is a way better fit that maybe they hadn't heard of before. Like I had never heard of industrial engineering before I got to college. Um, I knew what engineering was, but I was really glad that it was introduced to me because now here I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, So when and how did you guys decide on your STEM career and did your plans ever change? So it kind of sounds like Stephanie, you didn't know about it and you switched. So just kind of giving a background of your path along the way of how you got into engineering. Stephanie, you can start. Sure. And in high school, I was, um, my subjects were math and science. That's what I understood. English and history did not make sense to me. Um, So I I was a junior in high school. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, um, what I wanted to go to school for. I kind of knew where I wanted to go to school. I was kind of like set on going to Iowa. I really liked it. Um, and then I remember my dad and I think my guidance counselor were kind of like in cahoots with each other and kind of like, they weren't pushing me towards engineering, but they are the ones that introduced me to it. I remember my guidance counselor told me, she's like, you know, a woman invented the, um, the sliding door on a minivan. She's like, because she was a mom and she was struggling to get car seats in and She's like, she did that because she was an engineer and she could. So she kind of introduced it to me. I went and visited Iowa for the program. Um, but I wanted to do prosthetics is the thing that interested me. So I started off with biomedical engineering. I took Chem 1 freshman year. Um, I got about six weeks into, um, into school. And then I think we had the seminar where they came in every week um, and introduced a different type. And I'm sitting there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'm sitting there and they do like a presentation. They're like, it was a picture of a rose, I remember. And they're like, if you can see the dolphin in this picture, you have the type of brain that like industrial engineers can are really conducive with. Like you see things within other things. I don't remember exactly what it said, but um, sorry. But 
it was something like that. And I was like, oh, well, I can see the dolphin and all of this makes sense to me. And this is what I like. And I loved watching Unwrapped and like how it's made growing up. So I was like, you know what? I love watching those shows that were like, you're in a factory and you're seeing all the machines and how they work. So, and then I switched and yeah. Yeah, that's also a good point of also stating that even if you start off in a certain engineering path, you can switch. And even if you graduate with a degree in a certain like biomedical, you can also still work in careers outside of what you graduated in. So you're kind of always just figuring out what you like and what you don't like and, and moving to different areas. Dana, what was your experience? Um, so mine was, I was also good at math and science in school. Um, and I didn't have, I, I guess, remembering back to like sophomore, junior year of high school, I didn't really have like a strong inclination towards any degree in particular. There were ones I knew like I, I don't want to do this or that. Um, I didn't really have like anything set. Um, my dad's an engineer. So um, I think probably the, the combination of being good at math and science and then having an engineer um, parents already, um, that's kind of, I guess, how I decided on engineering, um, just because I figured I'd be good at it. And so then, um, Kind of like Stephanie, I also hadn't heard of industrial engineering until I went. I went to visit Iowa State, um, and then they like gave the program of all the different engineering types. That's when I heard about industrial engineering, and as soon as I heard about it, I was like, "That's that's the one for me." Um, and so I started at Iowa State in industrial engineering and stayed, and then got my MBA on top of it. So. Um, what I really liked about it was kind of the marriage between like business and engineering. Like I didn't want to be like all strictly engineering. I wanted to also have like um, a focus on business, which I think industrial engineering does a good job of tying the two. Yeah, that's cool to hear. I actually am learning just now that industrial had that business tie into the program because uh, I was not aware of that when I was in college. And it's interesting because I'm now trying to do that within my career is kind of move out of engineering and move into more of a business engineering role. So that would have been um, a good to have as a degree for this type of position that I'm in now. So that's, that's cool to know that you have that part of it within your classes. Um, another question that I have, and this kind of ties into what some exciting things that you guys have done for your jobs, but what is your favorite part about your job or your favorite part about industrial engineering? And then what is your least favorite part about your job or about industrial engineering? And Dana, you can go first. Um, my favorite one's easy. I love continuous improvement. Um, so I just like being able to, to find different ways to improve things. I think it can literally be anything. It could be the actual equipment itself. We make it more efficient. It could be coaching the people so that um, they're do doing their job more efficiently or even just helping make their job easier for them. Um, so I just like having a challenge um, and figuring out the solution for how to improve it. Um, so that comes in many different forms. Um, my least favorite. Um, I mean, I'd probably say my least favorite part about my current job is just having to deal with holds. Um, so within within quality, when you work in quality, just having to put like any product on hold, knowing that there's some sort of like defect with it just sucks. Um, Cause you're like, oh, I, knew, I know we can do better. Um, so it kind of goes hand in hand with my like, with my least favorite and my, and my most favorite parts of my job. I'm like, oh, we had this problem cause we could have done better. So now we have to figure out how do we do better. Um, but that's, that's what I would say. Yeah, maybe like proactive continuous improvement versus reactive where <laughs> there's a problem going on. <laughs> um, Stephanie, what's your favorite and least favorite part? I would uh, kind of agree with Dana to a certain extent. Mine is kind of like um, improving the job for the worker. 
Like I love when they come to me with problems or they come to me with their solutions um, to a problem that they have and I get to help them make it better because then they, they just, they love it. They're like, this is so much better. I, my job is easier. I am so thankful. It's, that's probably the most like rewarding part of my job. Like, yes. And I, I enjoy like efficiency and um, like improve me, improving yields uh, just because you like, you have a goal and you reach it and you're like, yes, I knew that we could get to this and this is how we did it. But I think working with the actual um, p- people on the floor is my favorite because I mean, they come up with crazy great ideas because they're the ones doing it every day. And then you get to help them. Maybe they designed something or you get to work with them to design something to make their job easier, I think is my favorite part. Um, as far as least favorite, I mean, I don't know, there's like a bunch of little different things that can bother you throughout the day. Um, I think sometimes you, I don't know, working with different personalities, sometimes it gets to be a bit challenging, especially if it's the one that you have to deal with every day or um, working with suppliers. Cause a lot of times there's a blame game going on that I do not enjoy trying to figure out, especially with quality. They're like, well, it's your fault. And you're like, no, well, it's not, or whatever. It's just, I don't like the little back and forth. That's, I mean, it comes with the job, but it's just not my favorite. Yeah, it makes sense. Just the culture and the people that you have to work with. Sometimes they're great and sometimes yeah. maybe not so much. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, everybody gets tense throughout the day. So yeah, that's definitely something you have to learn. You spoke about working with a team and working with people that you don't get to pick. So just learning how to work with different personalities, because yeah. even if it's not something that you drive with it, it could be something that's very beneficial to the company because they look at things a different way or whatever it is. Yeah. So some okay. things can just get tedious. So, yeah. Um, so to wrap it up, I have one more question and it's kind of a broad brush question. So if there's any last minute advice that you can give to girls out there that are um, planning to be in engineering and just how they can be successful in high school, in college and beyond. So just any last minute advice that you guys have. And Stephanie, I'll let you start. Um, I would say don't be intimidated. Um, I know that there's a huge push for, you know, women in engineering and STEM. And um, I think it's great. I think that a lot of women, um, I know that usually the most popular jobs or the most, the most women dominated are like nursing and teaching and things like that. And it's, engineering is a very male dominated field. Um, I mean, I, I've been fortunate enough where I've had a couple of female bosses, which is, um, a a much different dynamic than a male boss or anything like that. Or like I walked into my first job and there was 14 of us. I was the only girl. Don't be intimidated. You'll, you will be fine. Um, You will make friends. You'll make friends with boys and girls. Um, And it's a great learning experience. Um, You'll surprise yourself in STEM. You'll be able to do things that you never thought that you could do, especially if you're struggling in the class and then you end up um, doing really well, or you are like striving after this job and you end up there one day. It's just believe in yourself, like keep your, like, I don't know, keep your head up. It'll be all right. You'll get there. I promise. Um, yeah, I think that's just the best is just have confidence in yourself. Yeah, that's great advice. I totally agree with that. Dana, do you have anything to add? Um, she kind of <laughs> said what I was thinking as well. Um, I would also just say, like, now that I've gotten past the whole college portion of it, have fun in college. <laughs> I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, have fun. Don't, like, I mean, obviously you need to do well in your classes, um, but really don't, like, stress about it too much like don't don't get to the point where you like you're you know you're just too far in the weeds don't get to that point um because you know what you'll graduate and you'll get a job and then basically nobody remembers you know what happened in college or um you know careers after that point don't don't really focus on your college at all um so just kind of take that into consideration. Um, 
And then, yeah, as Stephanie said, it is a male dominated field. Um, there's a lot of meetings I have that I'm the only woman sitting in on the meeting. Um, but yeah, don't get intimidated by it. They're just other people. Um, ask questions when you don't understand things. Um, that's especially easy to do when you're just starting out. Um, Cause you gotta learn somehow and you're gonna learn from the people around you. Yeah, I think um, just to kind of add to that, it's a lot of times if you're the only woman in the room, you care a lot more than they do. Like you might be thinking, oh my gosh, I'm the only one here. They don't care. They are just like, you know what? We're here to do a job. You're here. They'll ask your advice. They'll take your input into consideration. So just kind of like put it to the back of your mind. You're all just engineers sitting around a table trying to find a solution, so. Yeah, great. That's good advice from both of you. Thank you so much. Um, that's the last question I had. So again, I just want to thank you guys for hopping on today and walking through those questions that I had. And I know the girls really appreciate um, you guys answering the questions and learning more about industrial engineering. So thank you. And uh, I will definitely um, make sure that to let you know if the, the girls have any questions for the questions. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, sounds good. Thank you.